quieter than the diesel engine. So if this were running right now, it would be like deafeningly loud in here. Also with the steam engine, you're obviously getting out all the fluids and smoke. But most of that's just going right out of the smokestack, you don't really have to deal with it. Whereas this, the diesel engine really doesn't give off the most pleasant smells. I mean, what is it now, 60, 70 years later, you can still smell the fumes in here from this thing. But the problem with the steam engine is that the fires have to be burning 24 hours a day, seven days a week. On the broiling hot, hottest day of summer, you have to have a fire burning down here yeah. because the last thing you want is some kind of emergency situation. You've got to get out of here really quickly, and your guys down here are fumbling around with matches trying to get a fire started. It's going to take probably literally like an hour for the water to boil to get any steam out. So you've got to be burning them all the time. They're burning through a ton of coal every single day. They have 70 tons of coal stored up on either side of the engine room. This is a colossal waste of resources for a ship that is designed specifically to never go anywhere. Mm -hmm. It's dumb. Uh, but the diesel engine, you don't even have to turn it on. I mean, you fire it up a couple times a year, make sure it's in tune and running properly. The rest of the time, you just forget all about it. Um, but this here's called a Winton. Uh, it's a division of General Motors, the car company, and they did like big diesel engines for Navy battleships and stuff like that. But what I think is really funny about it is as gigantic as this engine might appear, it gives out only 300 horsepower. So like the engine in, in a high-priced car today, like no bigger than this, probably gives out twice that. But this is like the size of a little bus or something, it only gives out 300. But you know, it's from 1930, so it's incredible. Anyway, when they put the engine in in 32, they need other ways to do kind of like smaller tasks on board ship, things like running electrical generators and pumps. So when they put in the big engine, they put in a, another little one, a little gray one over here. Got another little blue one over there, a little bit bigger. And there's another one about the same size right behind that one. And then we've got two slightly bigger ones. One here, one here. And I really hoping that we could uh, eventually take people down there. I was down there a couple days ago for uh, uh, an, uh, another look around, and it's like just kind of like steampunk paradise stuff. <laughs> But there, unfortunately, there's like 5,000 different ways to break an ankle down there, so yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh. Yeah, probably not yeah. safe. But. That ain't safe to go down there, I'm <laughs> telling you. I went to the one on the other side, ain't safe. I was like, the bottom is like the your concrete. Mm. You can't, when you did, I'm like, the, la the lady behind me said, oh, I feel dizzy, I can't do it. And I said, all right. We went back upstairs. I said, I ain't going to do that whole thing. <laughs> I ain't bothering. All right, so let's take a look at the officer. Oh, the office is quiet. Let's go. <laughs> so, you know, it's not considerably nicer, but it's a little bit nicer. You know, we've got nice wooden paneling. We have nice, like, uh, nicer furniture. They would have had kind of like a living room set up back here. would have had cushions by uh, no longer do you have to share a cabin with another crew member. Now everyone has their own private cabins. The food would have been a little bit better, not a lot, but a little bit. So the chef is making the food up in the front of the main galley, but he bring a little, little bit of it back to the smaller galley and kind of fancy it up a little bit, add a little bit of extra spices and stuff like that. Um, but not as much on a small ship like this, but the bigger and bigger ships you get, the more that this really does become kind of like a class divide. Because the, the officers are generally you know, very well educated, they're wealthy, they're privileged. Because that's kind of how they got these jobs in the first place. Whereas the regular crew members are just working class Joes. And they would have felt the difference, too. So like if you're one of those regular crew members and you have business with the captain back here, and you better have business with the captain if you're in this space at mm -hmm. all. But even so, you stop at that door, you take off your hat, you say, sir, may I please enter? Yes, you may. And only then are you allowed into this space at all. They wouldn't have felt comfortable socializing with these guys. I mean, look at how fancy these mustaches are. <laughs> Uh, but a little later on, uh, they finally got a television set, uh, which they kept back here. And uh, they knew that the regular crew members were going to want to watch the base baseball game, too. So they kind of loosened the rules. It kind of became, like, after it was no longer a light ship, kind of became more like a rec room kind of a thing for all of the crew members to use. But um, you can ignore the, the caption. Uh, these are this is very unlikely to have been a photograph of the actual Amber Ruth Rose crew. Probably a ship very much like it. But on board these ships, the uh, officers would be considered to be uh, captain, first mate, and two engineers. The engineers, um, obviously, running all this complicated machinery, had to be very uh, well educated as well. I'm pretty you know, see you notice now they're not playing cards; they're reading. They're they're, they're much you know much, much uh, more intelligent or whatever else. I'm sure. <laughs> 
soon as the camera went away, they put the books down. <laughs> <laughs>